Today I'm going to show you how you can plant four to six elephant ear plants throughout your yard and garden for five dollars. Stay tuned. I started these plants two and a half months ago from a bulb in a pot. So this is one and a half months of growth. Here's how you can do the same thing at home. This is how you start an elephant ear bulb. You see the rings going around it? Kind of look like Saturn's rings. And then the bottom, this one's kind of wet, but um, the bottom kind of resembles the moon surface. And the rings kind of resemble Saturn's rings. And the bottom resembles the moon surface. So I say Saturn rings up, moon surface down. Saturn rings up, moon surface down. First, we're going to add soil about a third of the way from the top. I'm using an organic potting soil that I picked up on clearance in the off season at Walmart for about $2. But any potting soil will do. Just make sure that it's organic and contains recycled plant and organic matter. I do not put chemically derived fertilizer salts in my ground or garden. Chemical fertilizers kill the life in your soil. And we are always building living soil in our garden. You only want to cover the top about four inches deep. When you have life in your soil, you can be a lazy gardener because the life in the soil will take care of the plants for you. And I'm talking things like fungi, protozoa, and nematodes to name a few. So for you, that means less time watering, weeding, and trying to figure out why your plants are dying and more time walking around admiring the beauty that you created. So I'm starting two of these plants, one for me and one for my mother, because my mother loves these plants. Not that she can't do it herself, because I learned to tend to plants just observing my mother. And my father is the outdoor gardener as well. This goes back to my great grandparents and beyond, because we owned plantations on both sides of my family in the Americas. So growing naturally comes natural to me. It's not as complicated as I see a lot of people making it in YouTube videos. One thing I want to point out is at this stage, we don't need any fertilizer. When the plant is ready to transplant into the ground, that's when we'll go ahead and fertilize it with a natural fertilizer. Once the plant for my mother starts growing good, if it's been in the pot over about a month and a half to two months, I will up pot it. But I will monitor the plant's growth and size to determine exactly when to up pot. And here we have moon surface down and Saturn rings up. And as you see, this bulb has already started sprouting. Which of these? All these points, all these little bulbs, points sticking out, starting to sprout. The bulbs begin to sprout as soon as we go into spring. So it will be hard to save one if you leave it out somewhere. If you wanted to store one for next season, maybe if you had a bunch of them, you would have to put it in a cool place, maybe like a refrigerator. And you just want to make sure you top it off with about four to six inches of soil. There's not a lot of room for these plants to grow and flourish in pots. So the pot is temporary just to get the plant started and so that I can start one for my mother. But you can plant these bulbs directly into the ground using these same steps. And this is a very vigorous plant, so you don't want to leave it in the pot for long. It has a very strong root structure, and it has multiple shoots coming off the bulb. So one bulb will give you four to six plants. You also want to check your bulbs to make sure they are firm, just by giving it a squeeze. If they are soft, you probably won't get a sprout. If your bulbs don't sprout after four weeks, check your bulb in another two weeks to see if it started to sprout, or if it's rotting, 
or if it's just becoming more soft. If it's doing anything other than sprouting, you've got yourself a dud. This is some Earth Lord nutrients from the sea solution. This is going to help my plants thrive and fight stressors by allowing them to take up more calcium. So I always want to start my seeds with this at the roots and with a foliar application. All water isn't good water. I use only filtered or rain water when feeding my plants because city water is full of chemicals as well. Because chemically derived chemicals are no good for any living organism. So we want to water it in evenly and then we are going to monitor it for moisture on a weekly basis and ensure it stays moist. We don't want it soaking wet, we just want it moist to the touch. And you can check the pot's weight to determine moisture as well by raising the pot up and down. This is the bulb that I started in the smaller pot. It's been in the ground four weeks and it's doing great. As you can see, I have four plants growing from this one bulb. At the end of the winter, they had these in Lowe's for $5 and I grabbed two of them. By these bulbs growing multiple plants, it's possible to go in and separate each plant so that you can move them throughout your landscape. If you're interested, leave a comment and I'll do a video showing how to separate a few of these plants to be relocated throughout the landscape. If I get enough comments, I'll do a video on it. One bulb grows multiple plants. 